Hello and welcome to the latest episode of Equation Stripped, where I take some of the most important equations in maths and then strip them back layer by layer so that everybody can understand. This week, we're looking at a very special set of equations which are credited with the first major unification of physical forces, and that would be Maxwell's equations of electromagnetism. The clue's in the name, really. These equations link together electricity and magnetism, but not only that, they also show that electromagnetic waves must exist and travel at the speed of light, and that means that light itself is a wave. For our first layer, I'm going to outline some of the uses and applications of Maxwell's equations to demonstrate just how incredible, how important they are. So, in short, any form of modern communication that we now use is a consequence of Maxwell's equations. So, radio, television, computers, any form of wireless communication, Wi-Fi, it all comes from Maxwell's equations. Maxwell's equations also led to the invention of radar, and this is where you send out radio waves and bounce them back off an object and then detect them when they come back. And depending on the different time, the different speed and how they come back, you can then figure out what that object is and where it is. And this was incredibly important in World War II because the Allies had the technology of radar and the Germans didn't. So when the German bombers were flying over the UK, we could detect where they were and therefore, you know, attack them. And the Germans didn't have this technology. So in some sense, you could say Maxwell's equations are the reason the Allies won World War II. And it doesn't stop there. X-rays, which we use to scan the human body, you know, maybe if you've broken a bone, that relies on Maxwell's equations. You've also got microwaves, which we use to heat up our food. Um, the new T-Wave scanners, which are currently used in airport security, they also are a consequence of Maxwell's equations. Basically, almost every aspect of modern human life as we know it today relies on electromagnetic waves in one way or another, and they are a consequence of Maxwell's equations. For our second layer, we're going to look at what the equations actually mean. So physically, what's going on there, what's hidden underneath the maths? And we have four equations, and I've written them sort of out in pairs because they're very similar. So here we have these first two equations, and the top one just tells you that electricity cannot leak away. So it has to go somewhere. If you have electricity, it can't just leak away like down a plug hole. It's got to go somewhere. And magnetism also cannot leak away. That's why this equation looks the same because it's telling you the same thing, but about magnetism. And then our other two equations, again, they look very similar. And what the first one is saying is that if you have a spinning electric field, then it will generate a magnetic field. So if you have a coil of wire and pass electricity through it, it will give you a magnet. It's called an electromagnet. And the second one says the same thing, but the other way around. So a spinning magnetic field will give you electricity. So if you have a magnet and you spin it, it will generate electricity. Now we strip back to our third layer and we come to the individual terms in the equations. So to start with, we have E, which is our electric field, E for electric. And then we have H, which is our magnetic field. And then in these two equations, we have this operator, this upside down triangle with a dot next to it. And that's called the divergence operator. And basically, it's just a mathematical function which involves derivatives. For our second two equations, you'll notice there are lots of very similar terms. So again, we have E for our electric field and H for our magnetic field. We also have a, the triangle operator again. So upside down triangle with a cross instead of a dot, this is called the curl. So again, it's a well-defined mathematical function, there are instructions that you follow that tell you how to take the curl of something. So what the first equation is saying is the curl of your electric field is related to the time derivative of your magnetic field. So the time derivative here is just saying how does your magnetic field change over time? So you have a magnetic field, you let some time pass, how does it change? 
The second equation is very, very similar. So again, we have the curl of the magnetic field this time, and we're saying that that is related to the time derivative, t for time, of your electric field. So again, you have an electric field, you let some time pass, how does it change? And then in both equations, we have this constant. So it's minus one over c for the top one, and it's one divided by c for the bottom one. And c here is just a constant. It's just a number, and it's the ratio of electrostatic units to electromagnetic units. You don't really need to know what that means, but what you get is that C is around 300,000 kilometers per second. And I kind of already written it on the board, you may have spotted. That is the speed of light. So by taking the ratio of electrostatic units divided by electromagnetic units, you get the speed of light. Now this is big and there is definitely something underlying this. There are underlying physics here and that's what I'm going to come on to. We've now stripped down to our fourth and final layer of Maxwell's equations and this is the big one. This is where Maxwell's equations show that light is a wave. Since the time of Newton, scientists had sort of known or sort of thought that light was a wave. They just didn't really know exactly what kind of wave or what was really going on. And then Maxwell wrote down his equations and everything just fell into place. It all just made perfect sense. The trick is to write these equations in terms of just one variable. So you'll see here, this one is in terms of E and H, and this one's in terms of H and E. So if you can somehow combine them and have an equation just for E, your electric field, and just for H, your magnetic field, you're gonna get more understanding. And that's what we do a lot in maths. We try to rearrange equations in terms of just one variable. And I'm gonna show you how to do it with these equations. And what follows from the calculation is the prediction of the existence of the electromagnetic spectrum. The first step of our calculation is to take this equation here and take the curl of it. Because if you take the curl of the whole equation, you're doing the same to both sides, so that fine, they're still equal. But then you'll get a curl of h, and we can then substitute from this one for the curl of h to eliminate h and have everything in terms of e. So now we have the curl of the curl of e is equal to minus one over c squared times the second time derivative of our electric field. And then we need one final trick to get to where we want to be. And we need to simplify this term, the curl of the curl of E. And what I'm gonna do is use a vector identity. So this is our vector identity, the curl of the curl, and it's equal to the gradient of the divergence minus the Laplacian of E. And you don't need to know exactly what all that means, but what is really important about this, and really great, is we have this divergence of E, this grad dot e term, and we know from this equation that that's zero. So this term here is actually just zero. And so now we can simplify everything. This, hopefully, you will recognize, because this is the wave equation. And anything that solves the wave equation, which here the electric field E does, in this form, the solutions are waves. So the fact that your electric field satisfies the wave equation, tells you electricity is a wave, and it also tells you the speed, because the speed in the wave equation is given by the square root of the constant here. So your speed is c, the speed of light, and your electricity is a wave. So electricity is a wave moving at the speed of light, an electromagnetic wave. And you can do the same calculation because these equations are so similar for electricity and magnetism. You can do the same thing and get the same equation with your magnetic field. And so both electricity and magnetism satisfy the wave equation. So they're both waves and they both move at the speed of light. Once you know that light is a wave, you can then measure the wavelengths of different colored lights. So if you think about the rainbow, right? Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, Violet. The red light is the longest wavelength, and as you move through the colours of the rainbow, your wavelength actually gets shorter and shorter, and so violet has the shortest wavelength of visible light. 
And that's the key, because this result tells you that there should be waves of other wavelengths that are not visible. So we have visible light that we can see, but then there are other wavelengths of light that will exist. And these equations in this theory tells you that they should exist. And once you know this, you can then go out and start looking for them. And that's exactly what scientists did. The full electromagnetic spectrum is shown here. So we have the longest waves at the top, which are radio waves, microwaves, so that's radio waves for transmissions, microwaves cooking your food. Then you move into infrared, then through visible light, then ultraviolet, so that's rays from the sun. Then into x-rays that we use to look at our bodies and our bones. And finally gamma rays, so this is like radiation from decaying atomic material. But of course we can only see the visible ones. So before Maxwell's equations and this link to the wave equation, the fact that light is a wave and that these wavelengths of light should exist. Before that, we, we had no idea. So that's, it's just incredible that he came up with this and then scientists were like, right, well, if these things must exist, let's go find them. Let's go find these other wavelengths and then let's see what we can do with them. So all of the applications that I mentioned, they all came from these relatively simple equations, Maxwell's equations. It's, it literally is amazing. So thank you everybody for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you do like what I'm doing, please do subscribe. You can also find me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all at Tom Rocks Maths. Check out all of my material on my website, tomrocksmaths.com. And please do join me next time when I'll be back with another equation ready to be stripped.